Hey bunnies, welcome to Indie Insider, and you may have seen this game before, because we have played it on this channel before. Northbury Grove. Okay, I love the VHS effect, but it's like, real wonky, so I think I'll turn that off. So, when I last played it, it was, it, it kind of pissed me off. There was a few issues, Grayson picked up a phone in hours, they're probably wasted. Victor Malm, interesting name for a band. It, there was a lot of bugs, I noticed, and there was a lot of just... Stuff that kind of pissed me off, generally, in game design. I'm pretty sure when you clicked escape, it would, like, automatically exit the game. There was a bug where just, like, I got stuck and I couldn't move anywhere. It's, it was weird. I had to, like, alter for a fair bit. You're right, who would leave a car just running like that? Bloke was here. Blake was here? Blake was here. Your interview is scheduled for tomorrow at the Spectre City Civic Plaza. Thank you so much for this opportunity, I really appreciate it. I'm currently headed to the King's Comfort Motel and I will spend blah blah blah. There was a few issues with the game, and I I didn't realize, but the uh, developers have been working on the game, f well, updating the game, bug fixing and stuff, pretty much constantly. I think the last update, like the last bugs fix, was like last week, right? So they were working on it. They they actually putting in some effort to fix the issues that w that were existing in the first place. I, like, and, and I couldn't f play the game earlier, right? I, I just couldn't do anything. So the fact that... Dun -dun -dun -dun. Why is this locked? Where the hell is everyone? We need to cut this lock. Okay, you're right. So, I'm, so I pl I'm playing this because if you didn't watch my last Indie Insider, I played a game called Happy's Humble Barn. That is made by the same people as this. Humble Burger Barn, sorry. It's made by the same people who made this stuff. I think that's pretty cool. Um, Happy, Happy's Humble Burger Barn was really nice, um, it was a really fun game, it was really well made. Which makes me think that the bug fixes and updates to this game probably... are probably pretty good. Festival has been cancelled. Weird that. Maybe there's bot cut or something in an industrial zone. Yeah, you're right. There probably is. There's also probably a killer with his creepy ass mask on. That's just a guess though. Also the music in this game's... That, that was one thing that I was like, yeah, this is this is a game. Okay, there's the horror guy with the freaking mask. There's a bong over there. There's like a lot of lore here um, that I didn't read all of it, for sure. I should look around the parking lot. But we just were there. I'm hoping, what I'm hoping for is that this killer is not bugged to the shit. Now the issue here is that like it's a very open environment. I don't know how I actually managed to find this place initially. But what's gonna happen is I'm gonna walk in here, Crystal's gonna go, Oh no, the gate closed, so I'm thinking Crystal is the killer, or working with the killer. Oh no! See, that, this, this is one, one of my main issues with the game, actually. Um, I can't see shit. The audio is really broken. I can't tell if there's, like, if the, maybe the enemies running around here. Okay, okay. Circumstances should anyone camp in the woods. So there is a killer on the loose. Um, that's for certain. I can hear him, maybe? Ooh. Is that law? I didn't notice the keycard before. It's a woman crying about her baby, sounds like she lost it. Yikes. See, it's a bit buggy still. But... Oh, God damn it, God damn it. It's hard to see anything. The audio is my main issue at the moment. Uh-oh. Did I attract the killer just then? Oh wait, hang on. I remember. So what happens is I go upstairs? The audio is really weird. I really think that the audio needed to be fixed like the most and it just wasn't. Cause I remember there was, I got bugged out of the, the door. I think it was here. Old bud. Yep. Okay. So I've unlocked the I've unlocked the enemy. Big boy seems to have some pretty good coding. See, I think it's the environment and the models that I get kind of the most issue with is this game, and I think that's the thing. Happy's humble barn. He's going upstairs again. Don't know what to do about that. Is he, like, just chilling up the stairs? What's happening? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> He's locked the door! He's locked the door! That's fucked. That is absolutely fucked. 
And the VHS effect, of course, turns off every time. See, like, I don't know. It's a very small cause. It seems to be very difficult to actually do this. I don't. I wonder how many people have actually played this and beaten the game that have enjoyed it. Because, like, it's scary, right? I click... Okay, that's funny. That's a funny... That's a funny thing that they added. If you click tab, it says no one's keeping score here, right? It's weird that they have, like... He has this, like, thing about doors. He slams them in front of him all the time. So as soon as you unlock him, if you open a door, he'll see you. It seems... He's climbing up, he's climbing up the thing. I have no idea if he can see me, but he's so close. I think he's, like, coming up this staircase. Fuck! Are you kidding me? What the fuck? Fuck! Are you Like, the, the him just chasing you and, like, attacking you is scary as shit. Like, the screaming, like, pig noises that he goes. Okay, she's just straight up gone. She's just given up. It's very difficult. And, to like, and it's especially not... It's, yeah, it's hard to see. Which is the main thing. Like, it's so hard to actually see anything that you end up just kind of not wanting to keep going because you like can't see anything you're dying because you don't know where he is not because he's like hiding or like he's very loud he's very huge you just can't see anything and i have no idea how the mechanics work like i don't know if crouching helps in any way i don't know if running changes it in any way so i'm assuming the fuse box is like right at the end of that hallway but i don't know how to get there i'm not against a difficult game but when the difficulty is based on just i can't see anything and i can't turn any of the settings up so i can see something it just ends up being annoying um i would say they've definitely fixed some bugs like i haven't fallen through the map or anything like the last time so i think they've definitely bug fixed i think it's literally just that they want it to be that visually weird and i can't handle that i just i can't handle that I love the VHS effect, I just think the VHS effect means that you can't see anything at all. If you turn it off, you can see it a little better, but not enough to actually do anything about it. I don't know, the corridors are so small that there's nothing really you can do. If he sees you, you're dead, so you've got to like sneak around. It's one of those games where I'm like, I can see people doing, I can see people like struggling to win it and enjoying struggling to win it. Me personally, I don't like those kinds of games. It's kind of, it feels Dark Souls-y in the sense that like you play a Dark Souls game and I feel like you're, you lose more times because of like getting locked into certain things that you can't get out of. Like you have to keep yourself out of situations and I'm more like, I want to get into the situation and then escape it. Like I want to have the quick movement to escape it and you can't escape it here. You're, you're screwed up. As soon as he sees you, you're dead. Tell me your thoughts. I know, I don't think many people commented on the last game, the last one. A lot of people have seen it, but not many people commented on it. And um, if you do kind of enjoy that kind of game, maybe you should give it a try. It is free. Um, there's a few free versions of the Scythe Saga. I'm going to play the second one um, very soon to see if the second one's any different from the first one and if it's one of the, like, more of a game that I enjoy. I mean, I, I love the horror aspect. The horror is really good. The sound and the models and textures are the thing that I'm annoyed about. I can't hear where he is because there's so many weird sounds just all over the place that don't really make sense. There has been a lot of bug fixes. It's it's definitely still a an alright horror game for an indie horror game. Um, I just think specifically that warehouse should be... I, I, I think it should be open hallways. I think the industrial... Especially that building is very tiny for like a tiny building um, that's in an industrial area. I feel like you know, any industrial area would have like a warehouse and it's shaped like a warehouse, but the corridors are tiny. The doors are huge, so they block off doorways. Just double the size of the building. And I honestly think it'd be a lot, like it'd be a lot easier, but it would also be a lot less frustrating. There's a difference between difficulty and just like frustrating. Like it's frustrating me to the point where I don't want to play it. <laughs> I really hope Northbury Grove, the second one, King's Comfort, I believe it's called, which is the hotel that they mentioned in the first one. Um, the story is by this one person. I don't think they made the story, or they maybe they didn't make the story. It said it's by someone else, but designed by someone else who also made the music. So I don't know if this guy made the music and 
the story and just like left it there and this guy just went okay i'm gonna make video games about it tell me if you want to see the second one but I'll, i might play it anyway it's the third one that i'm not sure if i'll play or not hey bunnies this is the little ending portion of the video before we end it so i did play this game again after we recorded this uh it took me about 40 minutes to get past the part where we were up to there's a few things that i want to mention so first off um all of the items are kind of randomized as you go across which i think is pretty cool I did notice the the creature does follow a route, but it changes depending on what doors are open. The creature is very door based. It'll follow open doors. It'll slam every door that it goes past. It'll like open and close every door that it goes past as well on its route. So it'll go through there looking through doors. But if it sees one outside of the route, it will come towards that door and then kind of push that into its route as well. So I think that was my issue. I was a bit confused with that. Um, it was very tedious though, still. I, I, th I thought maybe maybe it's just me, like, you know? And um, I kept going through it, kept trying it, and, you know, about 40 minutes later, it turns out, no, it's not me. Uh, I actually ended up, I didn't actually look up like a tutorial. I just look, kind of looked up um, just Northbury Grove on YouTube to see what kind of other people thought about it. First one I came across was Jacksepticeye, um, I don't know to explain who he is, and he pretty much said the exact same things I said. It's a very tedious game. I do want to say the creature is very, like, whenever you get chased by it, your heart races regardless of how long you do it for, I swear, and I think it's the music mixed with, like, the hell pig noises that come with it. Now, after the game, you will see in the video, after the... After we get to the part, we put the fuse in, we cut the wires to the keycard, and then we climb out the roof because they obviously lock the front door. Um, now there was a bug the first time I played it where I, I bugged through the wall and I couldn't get back in, so I had to restart the game, and that was the wall thing that pissed me off and made me quit the first time. Now, I think they've fixed that bug as far as I can tell. Now, so, so now the keycard works and I can get through the top, jump off, run, we find Crystal dead, keys on the ground, so we take the keys and go to the car, um, and we've got to find a car, the, her car, which is weird because we got there, surely we know which car's which. It's weird that like they included that as a mechanic when surely our character knows Crystal's car because that's where we came from. So we try a car because it says to find the car and a, an alarm starts ringing and so essentially we get chased by this beast once again and we're supposed to run through this huge car park clicking every single car to figure out which one's crystals. I died because I just kind of gave up. I thought I'd clicked every car but because it's the actual interact mechanic is a bit like it's laggy you have to double tap it sometimes. Um, I don't know which car I missed so I would have to go all the way back and do there was at least 20 cars I think. Um, you can count them if you want. It's tedious. Both of these big mechanics were very tedious, and I think that they could have been done better. I, like I said um, in the actual gameplay, I think that the actual collecting the items and escaping could have been done a lot better if they just made the warehouse double the size. Honestly, if they had just scaled it, like times it by two, you know? I don't know. The thing is, it's very scary. Like, it's super scary. And I that's the thing. They know how to make a scary game. It's just sometimes the mechanics are weird. Like, in the sense, like, even Happy's Humble Burger Barn, the mechanics accidentally added to the game by making it, by kind of, like, making it feel tedious and then a horror thing happens. What happened with that, though, is that if you would had any mechanics that just was, was were tedious, like, if it was just a clicker game and then a horror thing come out, came out and it's the same storyline as Happy Tumble Burger Barn, it would have been kind of similar, you know? They're good at making horror, they're more good at making scares, but the actual game mechanics for both games seem to not be great. So... I will play through all of the Scythe Saga universe at some point, but I am very worried that the mechanics are going to be kind of not fun for all of them. I hadn't heard of any of the other Scythe Saga games other than Northberry Grove, and Happy's Humble Burger Barn started getting played recently, so I don't really know what other people's reactions to that is. I did think it was really cool, the story. Again, good story, good kind of horror aspects, but... The mechanics kind of ruin the horror <laughs> in some things. So it's a free game. So if you want to get scared out, scared shitless, go check it out. I would say if you want to play a horror game by them, Happy's Humble Burger Barn works much better in their favor because they just, yeah, it's just better like that. Yeah. So I will see you in the next one. Please tell me if you enjoyed it. Tell me if you want to see more indie horror games because I love doing them, but 
I don't know if you guys enjoy them as much as I think you do. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you in the next one. Bunny out.